Yeah, once you hit it, you just win. Just the early game is super hard. Plus 18. I've quickly got to go over the items that you need to buy in the early game. Do not get baited by anything else. Whenever I bought a Gooba, I basically died because I did not get my main item, the crossblade, fast enough. To build the crossblade, the early game item is wooden sword and whetstone. Overall, you will need six whetstones because you want to build this hero sword twice and you need two gloves and you need two wooden swords. All right, because this blade, you need a hero sword and two whetstones. And for this blade, you need a hero sword and two gloves. These two swords combine then into the cross blades. And once you have that, you basically won the whole game and nobody really can beat you unless unless they have a lot of uh, spike shields. But in the late game, you also beat those. The sale, look here, I will show you. Cost four, now you have five. You sell it, it's you have nine again. So you can always buy a sale item if you want. Then you always have to maximize the space that you have in your pocket. You can move all pocket together with arrow key. Need wooden sword plus whetstone. So I always roll whetstone. And whetstone I reserve. I reserve it by right click. Right click. Then here, look at this whetstone. It has a star on top of it, a star under it. Then I put it in between two uh, swords. And now they both get plus one damage. If you face it like this, they don't get plus one damage. So it's lost. So do it like that. If I find another whetstone, it will combine with a sword or the wooden sword. And if you lock one of them, you can uh, stop it from... So you can stop the weapon from combining by right-clicking the weapon and then a lock will show up. And you can also undo it with a right-click. So make sure to do it before you want to combine stuff. And with that way, you can force uh, things to combine. Just like play around it with a little bit. What's very important to understand when you want to force a build is the item chances in this game. You can see in round one, the chance to get commons is very, very high. So 90%. And a whetstone is a common and you need six of them. So what you want to do in the first three rounds is to roll as much as you can while also being strong. But you also kind of need to understand when you can win a fight and maybe buy a sale item, maybe like a uh, shield to, to make you win it because your lives are also important just to leverage later on to be maybe a little bit more greedy. As you can see, then um, you also need to roll gloves. And for gloves, round six, is the best round to roll on. So sometimes I would save my gold to roll on turn six, but only if I have enough lives left, you know? Like it, it's always a little bit of a balance if you can be greedy for it or not, or if you need to save your round and buy like a bag of stones or something to just deal damage. And I think <laughs> it, like bag of stones just wins you some fights that you wouldn't have. The issue is then you might not be able to buy the cross blades later on because you bought the bag of stones and then you didn't get the rolls in for the gloves and then you keep rolling for gloves and gloves and you can't find them. So you always need to like maybe experiment a little bit on your own to get a feel of whether you can win the next fight or not. I think that's very important. Now let's get to the mid to late game items. On turn 8, you get the piercing arrow offered in your shop and you get it every time. So the start weapon deals 30% crit damage. So you need to make sure that the star hits your crossblade in the end. Or if you don't have the crossblade yet, just uh, the different piece of the weapon you have at the time. And you can see also green squares. The green squares you also want to activate with different items. If you do have the crossblade, you can get the blue, the blue star, the yellow star and the green square on the same weapon. And then you just place your items around it. Then another essential item is the bow and arrow. 
you can also place it in a way that the star hits your main weapon. You can also line it up that your the previous item that we talked about, like that the star also hits the arrow. It's a it's just a little bit of puzzling. You will figure it out. And also in the background, I'm playing a video. Then you can also see the lineup a little bit. Now you also need a little bit of survivability. And one thing you can do is buy armor. The normal leather armor will combine into the vampiric armor if you buy the blood amulet. It costs nine gold. You just put it next to it, and then it will you will see the gold line again. And it's a pretty good item, but you always have to like gauge what what you want as your defensive item. If you found a shield on sale, take the shield on sale. It's fine. You don't need a billion things. Just like see how the game goes. It pick and choose. Another good choice for a defense item. I think this is actually very underrated. It's the cap of resilience. So what I think a lot of people don't see is crit chance prevented so you can stack it imagine people don't crit against you and then they don't get a double hit from the bow or something and you just don't die as quickly and also you can put a gem on it we'll talk about this later too it's just another spot for a gem and it doesn't take up so much space and it's just damage reduction now the book of light that i already talked about is every three seconds you heal okay so if you don't have any mana you still get that but if you use 10 mana you become invulnerable you get a divine shield it says once but you can get multiple book of lights so if you have five book of lights and a lot of mana mana um uh, thingy you get a lot of mana then you have five divine shields in a row and then you everyone is dead everyone is dead like if even if you have three you have so much damage with this build that nobody could um survive three divine shields in a row and like the previous item that i showed you the helmet just gets you to get 10 mana like it, it sometimes it takes a while you can get a, a mana orb it will get you there quite quickly or you can get the box of the riches the box of the riches has a gem in it that is blue that if you put it on a weapon it will also generate you mana i think that's the two best ways to generate mana in this uh, game also the box of the riches you can't always buy you're not gonna buy box of the riches when you have one life left for example it just depends on where you are in the game i don't have this in all of my builds but i try to get it i think it is very good also it's like it's like a piggy bank but better because you like if you need money you can sell the gems that it generates too now a finisher for this build i would say is the acorn collar you can also place it in a way that it hits two to three weapons usually and it's just very good crit is very good in this build because the bow then double hits but you can't you also have to gauge here when you buy it not too early like when you have no defense what are you gonna do with a little bit of crit you know now the last item is lucky piggy i mean it's not essential but i thought it's cute you can place the lucky piggy in a way that the chance of something happening is improved and you can just put it to the put it put it towards pointing at the arrow the the items that i showed you first Okay, sorry, I was rambling. I was rambling. I don't have a script or anything. But I hope you liked this tutorial. I'm just thinking if if I have anything else to say to you. I can't think of anything right now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will try to answer. And 
I'm also streaming this game a lot right now. <laughs> like in two days, I streamed like 20 hours plus. It's crazy. So you can check out my VOD at twitch.tv slash And I'm probably going to stream it a lot in the next few days too. Have a good day. See you around. Bye bye.